Welcome back and welcome to this section, asynchronous application decoupling. So let's take a look at what we're going to learn in this section. Firstly, we're going to start with an introduction to Kinesis, with an understanding of what Kinesis is, where we can leverage it. Next, we're going to write an application that places events on Kinesis, so writing to Kinesis or to a Kinesis stream. And finally, we're going to use a Lambda to consume and process Kinesis events. Welcome to this video understanding Kinesis. In this video, we're going to take a look at Amazon Kinesis as a service, gain an understanding of what it means to, to build a streaming pipeline or a streaming application using Kinesis, understand some of the basic features and technologies and interfaces that Kinesis offers, and finally, and perhaps most importantly, understand some common architectural patterns for when we might want to use Kinesis as a technology. So first of all, what is Kinesis? Well, Kinesis is a fully managed streaming service and it's used for consuming and delivering real-time data. And as you might expect, and as you've heard before, Kinesis is nearly endlessly scalable and it's a service and it's used for buffering and analyzing streaming data. So again, Kinesis is a fully managed service. You can think of it as serverless if you like. It's just like DynamoDB. The only interaction you have with Kinesis is through its APIs through its endpoints and through the console. It's not a software package. It's not something you need to deploy. Uh, there's no servers, there's no operating systems to manage. It's just a service that you can consume and use. So what can you use Kinesis for? Well, Kinesis is useful in a number of scenarios. In this case, and in this video, or in this section, we're going to look at how we can use it to buffer real-time data between multiple producers and the consumer. But Kinesis can also be used for lots of other things. For example, you can write data to a Kinesis stream and use it to be consume, um, routed to multiple consumers, up to five in fact. You can use it to perform simple analytics on real-time streams of data. And in a few, a few slides time, we're going to take a look at an example of what this might look like. And we can also use it to group large volumes of data streams into batches or batch-based delivery. And Kinesis actually has a number of tools under its bonnet and a number of possible architectural use cases. Now, one of these is called Firehose. And Kinesis Firehose is actually almost a product or a service in its own right. And Firehose is used for scalable data delivery. So the way it works is you have a component that captures data and sends that data to Kinesis Firehose. You know, for example, a mobile application, a website, you might be capturing click, clickstream data, for example. Kinesis Firehose then prepares and loads that data continuously into the destinations you choose from. For example, Amazon S3, Redshift, Elasticsearch Service, or Kinesis Analytics. And you can then continue to process that data using any other tool in the Amazon ecosystem. So for example, you might stream click, click stream data into Amazon S3, and off the back of that, you might run some Athena queries to power a BI tool. Likewise, you might stream data into Redshift and run regular queries to update a BI front end or other application, or you might be using uh, streaming log data, for example, into Amazon's Elasticsearch service, and you might have a dashboard um, on top of that doing some kind of analytics on your log data. Next, we can use Kinesis for within stream analytics. Now, Kinesis Analytics, again, like Firehose, is almost a product in itself. So with Kinesis Analytics, you capture st streaming data into a Kinesis stream or to Kinesis Firehose, and then you can run standard SQL queries against those data streams. Now, Amazon calls this um, you know, standard SQL like anti-SQL. The reality is the analytic features available to you are quite limited. If you think about a stream of data, it's not necessarily suitable for typical SQL analytics type queries. Now compare that to a relational table where the data is static uh, with, a, with a stream in order to run lots of queries, you'd actually need to maintain some kind of state or some kind of buffered window over that data. So Amazon provides you a fairly limited SQL subset or a fairly limited subset of SQL like syntax that you can use to perform analytics against your stream. Um, but it can be useful for some kind of aggregations in real time against streaming data. And we've got an example of that in a few slides time. Kinesis Analytics can then send your process data 
uh, to other analytics tools so you can create alerts and respond in real time, such as Lambda, such as CloudWatch, such as SNS, uh, pretty much anything else in the Amazon ecosystem. And lastly, as an architectural pattern, we have buffering and delivery or application decoupling. And that's what we're really going to focus on in this section. So this is probably the most predominant, the most common use case of Kinesis. And that's actually just to buffer data before you pass it on to something else to consume it. So typically, lots of streaming, lots of companies and lots of um, technology firms are now using streaming analytics as a core part of their analytics process. And that's because lots of data that we see today is actually streaming in nature. So let's think, take a step back and think a little bit about what is streaming data. Well, it could be updates against your database, you know, such as uh, DynamoDB streams. It could be uh, clickstream data against your website. It could be um, tracking hashtags on Twitter, for example. Uh, it could be you know, any kind of event stream, any kind of sequence, regular sequence of events at high volume can be considered a stream. So for example, think about uh, bank transactions against a, main, a mainframe, for example, that would be a stream of data. Now, normally we want to do some kind of processing on that data, and the processing on that data might have variable latency. And of course, we don't want the processing or the analytics of a data stream to hold up the producer. So for example, if we had clickstream data and we were sending that directly to our Spark cluster, uh, if, Spark, if Spark was running slowly, we'd have two choices. We'd either have to block the, uh, the producer, which in this case would be the end user, from producing data uh, any faster than Spark could process it, or we'd have to drop data. Neither of those situations are acceptable, which is why in a distributed system, we often talk about application decoupling. And this is where Kinesis comes in. So in this instance, Kinesis essentially acts as a scalable buffer until your consumer can catch up. So you can produce data as fast as you like, and then you can consume from it almost at your leisure. And, and Kinesis has a feature called retention built in where it can store your data for up to seven days until you're ready to consume it. So typically with this workflow, we would capture and send some kind of data to Kinesis streams, and it could be a stream of any kind of regular event data and then we can build some custom real-time applications, either using Kinesis Analytics, some stream processing framework like Spark, some code running on EC2, or, or most interestingly of all, Lambda. And that's the use case we're going to focus on in this section. Finally, once you've processed that data, you can aggregate it in some way and write it out somewhere else. Either, you know, perhaps loading the processed data into some kind of data store, sending some kind of real-time alerts based on the contents of the events, or feed some live dashboards or pretty much anything else that you can think of. So let's look at a social media example. Imagine we were building Twitter and we wanted to use some of the technologies on AWS or a Twitter-like clone, let's say. First of all, we might load a, a stream of tweets into Kinesis. So we load um, a whole bunch of data in, into Kinesis. Every tweet that anybody produces, anybody writes, goes into our Kinesis stream. We then use some Kinesis analytics to generate some kind of hashtag trend data in real time. And we then pass that on to another stream. And we use a Lambda function off the back of that stream to write the trend data into DynamoDB. And then from the, off the back of that, that trend data can be immediately queried by business users or your website or front end. And of course, and the important, important thing to highlight here is this Kinesis analytics piece might be slower at peak time, for example, than the, the event stream that's coming in to your Kinesis stream. And what this Kinesis stream allows you to do is buffer that data until your consumer can catch up. And typically with a stream, we refer to producers and consumers. So in this case, this is your, this would be your producer, the social media data, and your consumer would be Kinesis Analytics. And again here, the producer is Kinesis Analytics into this Kinesis stream, and Lambda is your consumer. So let's have a look at some of the key con concepts of Kinesis. So firstly, we have a stream, and that's the highest order de denomination. So a stream is just an ordered sequence of records. You can think of it like the equivalent of a DynamoDB table or an S3 bucket. It's the highest order of grouping that we have, and it's just a sequence of data records. And typically, a single application would have a given a single stream. Next, we have the data records. These are like the entries into our DynamoDB table. 
it's a single unit of data with a maximum size of one megabyte. So that's your, in your event stream, a data record would be a single event. The retention period is how long Kinesis will hold your data for on the stream. Uh, and the maximum it supports is up to seven days. So the idea is obviously you want to consume your data as fast as possible, ideally in, in real time. So it's not really advisable to store your data on the stream for up to seven days. You should be consuming in real time, ideally, if you're following uh, the correct architectural principles. But let's assume you had a problem with your consumer, some kind of exception, some kind of code problem. Kinesis will buffer your data for up to seven days for you. Then we have the producer. So the producer is something that puts records into a Kinesis stream. So it writes data records into a Kinesis stream. Uh, and in the next video, we're actually going to write our own producer. Next, we have the consumer. And that's something that consumes records from a Kinesis stream. So it does some processing on events from a Kinesis stream. And again, in the final video in this section, we're going to write a Lambda consumer for a Kinesis stream. Next, uh, it's like something called a shard. And a shard is how we scale our Kinesis stream. So a shard is a uniquely identifiable group of data records in a stream. Each shard supports up to five reads per second, each of up, uh, up to two meg uh, per second in total, and up to 1,000 writes per second, up to one megabyte in total. So one megabyte per second of writes and two megabytes per second of read. And you might be wondering why you have that ratio, 1,000 writes to five reads. Well, the idea is each event is an individual write. So typically you will write individual records one by one but you will consume in batches. And this, this, um, this is a concept called micro-batching, and lots of streaming applications actually use this. So look, you may well be familiar with Spark or Spark Streaming. Spark Streaming is actually using a concept called micro-batching. So typically the way it works is you'll set your micro-batch um, period to be one second, that's the smallest you can do, and Spark will consume all the records it can from its um, from whatever's producing data. So Spark will be the consumer. It will consume as many records as it can in one second and then process them and then process the next second batch of data and so on. So that's why a shard can support five, only five reads but a thousand writes because the idea is your consumers will batch data. And finally, we have the partition key and that's used to group data by shard within a given stream. So this is really interesting or really useful if you want to guarantee some kind of ordering in your stream. So for example, if you were consuming uh, from a Twitter feed and you want to make sure that all of your, uh, all tweets from a given user end up on the same stream so that the consumer can do some kind of ordered processing, you would use the user ID as the partition key. And that makes sure that all users, uh, all events from a given user end up on the same shard. So a brief look at sharding. Um, a Kinesis stream can have between one and n shards. That's your unit of scalability. So uh, producers will write data to your Kinesis stream. Kinesis will write, uh, distribute those, th those data records across your shards. And it's important that your partition key has even distribution so that data gets equally distributed across your shards. And then you might have EC2 instances or Lambda functions or whatever acting as consumers and then writing that data downstream to some other data store. So in this video, we've taken a, a look at Kinesis for the first time. We now understand what Kinesis is as a technology. We understand when it's appropriate to use a streaming service. And we've had an outline of some of the common architectural patterns of when we might use a streaming service such as Kinesis.